Here with his take is Derek Halpenny. He's the European head of global currency research at the Bank of Tokyo, Mitsubishi. He's live in London. And uh, Derek, you know that when the mainstream press is, is picking up long form articles on a currency crisis, we have certainly uh, reached, reached somewhat of, of a decision inflection point. Uh, I know currency strategists like yourself have been watching this for some time. What was your read on Krugman's piece? Yeah, I thought it was an excellent piece. I think the, the, the most valid and important point that I would raise from the article is um, in reference to the simple comparisons between debt levels in Europe and in the United States. And a lot of uh, dollar bears who are predicting the dollar to weaken this year are simply suggesting there's going to be a shift of concern over to the United States because debt levels there are bigger than here. But I think they're missing a very important point. Um, and that is that, as Krugman explains in his article, there's a fiscal structure in place in the United States right. with the vast amount of government spending, federal spending, so there's an, a natural transfer mechanism in place and investors are fretting about the fact that countries like Greece and Ireland cannot, under the current structure, uh, solve their debt situations and we need to see changes in the policy steps that have been taken in Europe in order for investor confidence to return. Right, that, that becomes a, a political solution, right, to uh, an economic and financial crisis, but that takes some time to unwind. So short of some sort of overhaul of, you know, ECB, Eurozone structure, what resolution do you see on the horizon? Well, well, I suppose one of the reasons why the euro is, is rallying at the moment, and it was rallying ahead of the, the Trichet comments yesterday, is, you know, the... Um, the belief that the EFSF is going to be changed and that the funding costs or the interest rate costs for countries using it the structural is going to drop for, dramatically. For bailouts, essentially. Yeah, because ultimately that's the problem. Irish yields, tenure yields, Greek tenure yields are still very much close to highs. They've come down in recent days because of optimism that this EFSF structure will change. But, you know, today we've had comments from Germany suggesting that they're still opposed to any dramatic change. And I think the risk now is that once again, we're going to get some kind of uh, consensus between the two sides within Europe and that ultimately will disappoint the markets. Uh, in the piece that Krugman wrote, it brings up an idea that former U.S. Treasury Secretary Paul O'Neill also floated, which was the comparison between what happened with Argentina, with a country that was allowed to essentially default, and what's happening now in Europe. What do you think of that comparison? Why won't we see an Argentina situation play out? Well, I think it's, it's, it's an important comparison, actually, in terms of what's happened with Trichet's comments. And I think certainly to diminish considerably the risks of something like that happening, we do certainly need to see a weaker euro going forward. And certainly if the ECB is to, uh, as they suggested yesterday, repeat what they did in, in July 2008 and raise interest rates when financial markets are still extremely fragile, um, we could see the euro uh, being at levels that are much, much higher than where they should be. And for a country like Ireland, where it's exporting uh, nearly 40% of the UK and the United States alone, mm -hmm. a higher euro, when Ireland is very much dependent on net exports getting it out of this problem, would ultimately mean that Ireland would be in grave difficulties, much, much more grave than what they probably are in at the moment. All right, Derek, it's a, a continued struggle we'll watch, but uh, interesting note from you that you do think that there is some real expectation in the marketplace that we'll see a, an overhaul of the structure fund next week. Um, yeah, well, that's, I, I'm not sure it'll be announced next week, and certainly from the comments from, from the German officials today, um, it, it's, it's unlikely we're going to get anything substantial. Certainly in terms of size, it doesn't seem like we're going to get any change anytime soon. Yeah. More importantly, as I mentioned earlier, it's, it's, the, it's the costs, it's the interest rate charges. Yeah. And for example, the IMF charges something around 3%, whereas the FSF charges something like 6%. Are we going to get the EFSF down to the IMF charges? Somehow I doubt it. All right, Derek, have a great weekend. Thanks for joining us.